Haryum, my dear viewers. Welcome to the beautiful world of English literature. Today, I shall give you some questions and answers based on the poem A Thing of Beauty by John Keats. So let's begin with the first one, okay? What is the theme or central idea of the poem A Thing of Beauty? According to the poet John Keats, beautiful objects give us eternal joy and happiness. The unalloyed and undiluted joy that we experience cannot fade into nothingness. Instead, it multiplies manifold whenever we think of those beautiful objects. It's a joy forever, a joy that can nullify, obliterate, or reduce and completely wipe away the negative impacts of diseases, sufferings, and disappointments in life. Second one, what does a thing of beauty symbolize? Answer, the expression a thing of beauty is a joy forever means a person or a group of people experience happiness while feasting their eyes upon a beautiful object, natural or artificial. The happiness is undoubtedly and irrefutably everlasting. Even when we turn our attention away from that, it continues to give us true happiness. It is only our physical eyes that has lost connectivity with the beautiful object. But with the help of our mind's eye, mental eye or the inward eye, we can still continue to enjoy the beauty of the object, to experience the happiness that the object bestows upon us. The memory of the beautiful object lives forever and inspires us to live life in spite of its trials and tribulations. This ability to see with the help of our mind's eye which is an individual's uh, great ability, projects and proclaims the aesthetic sense in him or her. Third one, how does beauty and morality go together? It's a well-known fact that beauty and morality, ugliness and immorality are intrinsically linked or naturally connected. To put it in simple words, virtues like honesty, kindness, compassion, sincerity, empathy, etc. are beautiful traits in a human being, giving him or her a completeness. In the same manner, deceit, mean-mindedness, envy, anger, rudeness, etc. are all vices that wipe away the peace and comfort among people. Fourth one. What is the line, therefore, are we reading a flowery ban to bind us to earth, suggests to you? The poet says that in spite of the sorrowful happenings in our life, objects of beauty enable us to enjoy quality sleep. So every day, the beautiful objects that give us peace and solace act like a band of flowers that bind us to Mother Earth for the benefits that beautiful objects shower upon us. We should be obliged and grateful to Mother Earth. We have to remember our allegiance, our obligation to Mother Earth by leading a quality life and making our life worth living. Fifth one, what does the expression a bower quiet for us suggest? In the expression, a bower quiet for us, the poet uses the poetic device metaphor. A bower is a quiet, cool, shady place under the branches of a huge tree. The calmness, the quietness and the serenity that we get to experience under the cool shade of a huge tree is compared to the calmness and peace of mind that we experience when we are impacted by a beautiful object. Next one, why is grandeur associated with the mighty dead? The words mighty dead refer to noble people who have performed great, generous and brave deeds when they were alive. They have lived an exemplary life 
that even after they have died, they continue to inspire us to do noble deeds. They have left indelible impressions of footprints on the sands of time. They continue to live among mankind through their stories and legends about their life, which according to Keats is a source of beauty, a thing of beauty. Hence, on Doomsday or the Judgment Day, the noble deeds of the great people will fetch them a reward from the hands of God Almighty. God will reward the grandeur and magnificence, glory and splendor of their noble deeds. Their noble deeds elevate them to a glorifying, magnificent and impressively splendorous position in heaven. That is why they are referred to as the mighty dead. Seventh one, what do we understand from the expression inhuman dearth of noble natures? According to the poet, the world lacks men of noble nature, that is, good people or people of good qualities. It is extremely sad that there are very few people who are good-natured, who lead a selfless life and uh, involving themselves in deeds that focus on welfare of mankind. There is an acute shortage that dearth means shortage, that is, shortage of noble people or good-natured people in this world. The way, world is full of people who are selfish and pursue evil ways. So, in spite of this acute shortage of good-natured people, we human beings can find peace, comfort and solace in beautiful objects that Mother Nature bestows upon us. Eighth one, explain of all the unhealthy and over-darkened ways made for our searching. Answer, we human beings undergo excruciating pain and sufferings. We are surrounded by inhuman, cruel, insensitive people. Hostility and enmity suffocate us and make our days on earth sad and darken our ways with distress, misery and wretchedness. The turmoils, trials and tribulations that life throws upon us perhaps make us search for or look for beautiful objects that give us everlasting happiness. We tend to search for, desperately find succor, comfort and peace in beautiful objects that Mother Nature bountifully offers us. Ninth one, explain pouring unto us from heaven's brink. The endless fountain of the immortal drink or elixir is pouring from the brink of the heaven. Brink is the edge. In the poem, John Keats gives us a detailed description of the beautiful things that God has bounteously gifted human beings. These gifts pour out non-stop from heaven, radiating undiluted happiness among mankind. The last one, what lovely tales does the poet speak about? The lovely tales are the interesting stories of our ancestors which celebrate their pomp, glory and triumph. These stories have been narrated to us by our ancestors that remain as things of beauty, giving us joy unlimited and undiluted. These tales are referred to as an endless fountain because they serve as a constant source of joy, comfort and solace. With this, we come to the end of this video lesson. Hope it was quite useful to you, my dear children. Please pause the video as and when required. Thank you very much. Happy learning. Keep smiling. Hadiyo.